It's our recording studio is in New York City. And on this show, we talk shop with musicians about their crafts. And today we have a very special show for you all. And uh, before we all dive in, I want to take a second to introduce everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Junta, and I'm the co-host of the show. And I'm a music producer and recording engineer at GSI Studios. And the host of the show, next to me, my friend, he is a Grammy-winning drummer and one of the most in-demand musicians in the music business. And he's also one of the co-owners of GSI Studios. Say what's up to Mr. Eric Harlan. How you doing? What up, Eric? What's going on, man? How you doing, Josh? I'm chilling, man. And uh, yeah, I want to introduce our guest now. Uh, we're very excited and thankful to have him on the show. He, uh, he really needs no introduction, but I'll introduce him anyways. <laughs> He's got uh, seven Grammys to his name, 19 Grammy nominations, seven studio albums, seven live albums as a band leader, and he's currently a member of Dayton and Company. And if you're here, I know you're already a fan. So uh, welcome to the show, Mr. John Mayer. Thank you guys for having me. Hello, everybody down there in the rapidly moving chat log. <laughs> Someone said John doesn't look happy. <laughs> I, I do. I have a very nondescript listening face i don't my my in my brain i think i'm really smiling and i think i look like that but inside i look like that processing time processing time. yeah you should play poker i should i should poker i feel like uh i feel like everyone who's ever explained poker to me is missing the one f the one little feature of poker where i'd go like now i want to play poker <laughs> I just, I'm always short. One, I feel like so everyone's missing the one thing that would make me go, I get it. I got to play poker. I don't know. It's an expensive habit, you know? Yeah. I get gambling. <laughs> Poker's just short one feature of the game. Like, like if it could go to some feat of strength in the middle of it, or... Something involving a marble or something. I'd be like, I get it. Every once in a while, you got to roll a marble or something. But just, <laughs> I don't know. It's not for me. Hey, I second you on that. I can't get you a pool. Yeah. Pool table. Yeah, man. Yeah, I can, I can understand a pool table. I understand blackjack. Then there are things I don't understand that I know I will, like golf. I don't get it, but I'm all too sure that one day I will. And I'm excited about life in that it holds certain little stages of things you're gonna like that you don't get, and I enjoy that. That golf awaits. I think golf <laughs> awaits us all. Golf. You know? <laughs> so, so you, what are your? You got any stupid hobbies though that you do partake oh, in? Always, always, yeah, always. Uh, but a, a lot of it's like um, a lot of it's like late night. In the last hour of my being awake every night, I'm very investigative. And I'm always putting together plans and little things. And I'm, I'm buying things, not for the sort of consumerism of buying it, but like putting together things, you know, like it, it's, it's my mind needs a certain amount of racetrack. And a lot of my hobbies are basically just like, I'm going to design a survival pack, which might take me a week, which means you get to research everything you put in it, figure out what you put in your survival pack. You know, you get to get some UPS deliveries. You get something to look forward to for a week. So uh, those are kind of my hobbies. They're like theoretical pursuits. You know what I mean? Okay. Theoretical pursuits are really, really fun for me. Yeah. That must mean you, most, you, what's that? you must buy a lot of guitars and, and gear. I used to buy a lot of guitars, and I moved my, my sort of fun from the gear to, like, what it is I want to write. I'm, I'm trying to put all the energy into the writing into the work because it's really easy to get stuck on the stuff so i kind of issued myself a challenge a couple months ago of like just write it on the acoustic guitar if you're going to demo it no tricks like under record everything don't produce every like just everything has to work on the acoustic guitar that's the calculator it has to work on it and uh so i used to be into the stuff Eric, I don't know. I mean, are you have you found that in your many years of playing now, you're more um, zen about just playing than you are the stuff it takes to play? That's true. Yeah. The information is there, um, and you have the ability to access it. And I, I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, especially talking about you 
And um, I, I feel that's what people love to see is the relationship between you and the source, the energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh, brings us to that moment. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, preparation, I mean, for me, it's, I don't want to say it's, it gets to be monotonous. I like to be analytical. And like you said, theoretically know about certain things, theoretically put things together. But one thing is like when it's time to really be in that moment, I definitely want to just surrender to that moment because yep. the most special thing about that moment is just like, yep. that. I started feeling when I was playing with Dead and Company a couple of years in uh -huh. the sort of zero gravity of the weightlessness of playing where the instrument goes away. Oh. When the instrument goes away and it's just you and the music, that's that's that's, that's perfection. Yeah. That's perfection. And uh, my my first risky statement of of today's conversation is that I, I think a lot of playing music and myself and other people is playing the stuff, playing the gear, okay. trying the gear, using the gear, mess with the gear, uh, audition the gear. Um, and, I, and I've stopped trying, I've, st I've, I've tried to stop playing the guitar and start playing music on the guitar. Mm. And I know that sounds like a really stupid little semantic, but- Not at if, all. If you can stop using the guitar, and begin to just use the guitar as the conduit to what you want to play. <laughs> I, I see a lot of people, and it's fine, man, I do it a lot, and I'm trying to get away from it, but I see a lot of people playing the guitar. So it is true, the only way you can hear a guitar is to play it. So you have to play it. But then there's a thing beyond that, which is only playing your guitar in so much as it takes to get to where you want to go. You know? And those are the players that I think we all love. Yeah. Those are the players who keep their eyes closed for an hour and a half. You know? And let me ask you, does that make it easier to just kind of play in any room and any circumstance with any type of musicians? Is that kind of free you up where you're not so like attached to you know kind of the, the tangible aspects of yeah of what yeah you're playing? yeah i think i've been doing this long enough that i have a certain kind of tenure to where um people know how i play so the first i don't know 10 years of your life you're playing so that you can introduce yourself to people so that you can uh, allow people to understand how you play and there's no, there's no more one show anymore that will make or break me. And there's not really this sense of like, let me play so you know how I can play. And that, having, having that behind me is a really wonderful way to sort of open the road ahead of me and go, whatever comes, comes. Like enough people know how I think that this conversation can go wherever, wherever it should go. This conversation is very similar to jamming. Like we don't have a syllabus. We just started talking about about golf and poker, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and if, and if this were the first time I ever talked to the world, I would go, wait, this isn't how I want to start it. This isn't how I want to start it. And so I'm at this point in my life and in my career where I, I can afford to flow. So if I got up to sit in with somebody and it was a guitar that wasn't set up for me and I really couldn't quite get around on it, mm -hmm. I would find the things I could do on it and play that. And even if that ended up being this really raw thing that wasn't as articulate as I wanted, I get to go, wow, that was cool for that. That was, that was interesting. That's what came out in that moment with those people with that guitar. Cool. I wouldn't drive home like I might have 20 years ago being upset that that's not how I sound. That's not what I want them to think. So I have this really interesting relationship with the universe now, which is like people to a certain level understand what I do and how I sound so that I'm free to just make small, interesting contributions to their knowledge of how I sound without having to think about these, these large scale, how am I going to come off? You know, I have, I feel like I have the freedom now to just play and roam and, and, and experiment, you know, do you feel that way, Eric? Like yeah, yeah. people totally. know enough how you sound that you can now stretch a little bit. Yeah. You can stretch it and get one field pigeon held to uh, a certain idea. You can even work with that idea a little bit more. And I think the most important thing you said is just you, this, you've 
I hate to say earn the flow, but yep. yeah, you earn the flow. You it's, earn the flow. That's you, right. Well, 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 you earn it and you learn it at the same time. Exactly. I think, I think if you knew how to do it, I would, I would tell everybody to go for it before they'd earned it. But I think you earn the knowledge of how to do it. And, yeah. and the flow comes from no one night can make or break you. Yeah, no one it's like talking to a great friend. They're not going to hate you if you say something that came out wrong. And they're not going to love you more if you happen to say something uh, interesting or incredible or hilarious. You're held in, the, you're held in, in place in, in, in the altitude that you're in. You know? There's, and, and no one show is going to be the show everybody goes, oh, my God, now I get it. And if I break all six strings at once on stage, I wouldn't drive home going like I'm ruined. Hey, man, sometimes yeah. that's the better show. That's the better. Oh man, the ones that I didn't like, I listen back to, and I go, "Oh wow, I don't know what I was thinking." <laughs> you know, I, I always say now, there's a difference between um, giving a good show and having a good show. Right. And ideally, you want to give. You always want to give a good show, and if someone had to lose, it's you, right? You'd rather you'd rather be the one to not feel it if the crowd loved it. Yeah. But ideally, you both love it. You gave one, and they, you know. You gave a good show and you had a good show. But most of the time you give a good show and don't think you had a good show. Yeah. I don't think I've ever th- like like had a good show and the crowd was like, no, you didn't. Right. But when those things line up, that's mm-hmm. why we do it. When someone says that was great tonight and what you want your first answer to be is like, yeah, no. Which is rare, but those are the nights we do it for. So you go, yep, that was me. That's how I am. That was, you just saw how I most hoped. Or like you saw the me I knew I was at home. Okay. Like you saw the me I heard alone when yeah. I was practicing. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's deep, yeah. 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 I also I feel like you've carved out a unique place in like the pop sphere where you're recognized as a, as a pop artist, but you've kind of created that freedom for yourself to actually imp- Improvise and, mm-hmm. and kind of have the freedom to create different projects that let you do that. I, I can't think of that many artists that that really do that on that type of stage. Yeah, I mean, I got I got dropped into like several territories at once at the, when I in, in terms of the way I picked up music. Like I, I was, I grew up on I grew up on nineteen eighties MTV which was the classic era of pop music. I think you did too, Eric. We're about the same age. Yeah. I mean, to think that we were turning on the TV and in real time, music that had been hot off the press was music that would go on for the next 30, 40 years to become legendary music. And it was like we were listening to it the month it came out. I mean, it was everything. I mean, talk about a golden era. Yeah. And then I discovered the guitar and I went, I want to play the guitar. Blues music, blues music, blues music, jazz music, blues, blues, blues. Again, I want to play the guitar as much as I can. And I did, and everybody, by the way, should play the instrument as much as they can. Don't worry about what kind of music you want to make on it. Rip everyone off. Do it just to hear it be done. Play it just to felt feel it be played, you know. And then I discovered, like, Ben Folds. And Ben Folds made songwriting feel so exciting to me that I went, stop everything. I want to be able to put that much personality into music or into songwriting. And I always loved the legends, Paul Simon, Billy Joel, you know, um, Elton John, James Taylor, Sting. I mean, those guys are unbeatable. But for my generation to hear a guy a little bit younger kind of talk in lyrics in a way that I thought was funny and clever and interesting. I went, no, 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 that's what I want to do. So my whole style is, I think, defined by constantly changing my mind as to what I want to be. It's not, I never came up going like, I'm going to do a little of this, a little of that, a little of this, and a little of that. It's like, I only want to be this. Wait, 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 I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I only want to be this. Screw that. Screw that. Screw that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I only want to be this. And by moving around and kind of continually, you know, kind of like going into witness relocation, in terms of all the different places you're moving into, you start realizing like, oh, I do have 
the need to play blues like I practiced when I was trying to play like Stevie Ray Vaughan or Eric Clapton or Jimi Hendrix. And I do have the need to write lyrics like Paul Simon wrote Slip Sliding Away or Train in the Distance. I mean, those are some of the best written songs of all time. And I do have a need to be outgoing as much as I wish. God, if I could change one thing about myself, it would be for people to say, like to be the kind of person people would say, man, he's really shy and he doesn't have a lot to say at first because he just doesn't quite know how to relate to people. <laughs> but then when he plugs an instrument in, you're just like, oh my God, how do you do that? And then he'll turn the amplifier off. But again, he's very shy. I wish I just don't have that. I'm far too comfortable with people. I'm, I'm, un I'm unnecessarily comfortable with people, you know? So there's that, right? So there's that. So then I have to go do current mood out of my living room because I want to I want to connect and I want to express and I have all these ideas and so things are always going I just think I was always changing my mind as to what my major was and I still am I'm always changing my major you know? that's wise though that's wise that you don't become complacent no I'm I am still in uh, perpetual day one I'm in per the only place I'm not in perpetual day one is that I know I've written the songs I've written, meaning as I sit down to write, I'm aware of what I have said and I'm not inclined to attempt to copy myself. I say attempt to, because I'm not going to, no one's ever going to say, wow, you wrote a new song. It's like slow dancing in a burning room, but it's better. You know, no one's ever going to say that. And, and by, by having these songs that people attach to, I'm so lucky I have that. I go, well, I don't, I don't want to go back and visit that. I won't do it as well. If I wrote a song like Slow Dancing in a Burning Room, it will be its younger brother. It won't be better, you know? And so the only thing that isn't perpetually fresh for me is that I have to work a little harder to find a parking space for, like, for a song idea. It's got to be the same thing it's always been. It's got to say something. It's got to be right for me. It's got to be meaningful. It's got to have some sort of cleverness to it. And now it can't be something I've already said. Yeah. Because I think, I've, I think the things I've said in songs before have been said very, very well, or at least received very well. So I write fewer songs because so many bubbles in the bubble wrap have already been popped. So I'm sort of always going like, I'm gonna go, oh, here's one, pop. And you keep looking around. But when I was younger, and you know, I'm 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 just right now looking for a certain kind of maturity in my playing and a youth in my writing. You know, like I think we I'm all interested in what's that? I say I think we are looking for that. Yeah. What is it about youth yeah. that makes creativity so vibrant? Yeah. And why can't you do it your whole life? I don't, I don't have the answer, but I'm working on it. You know, what, why do 24 year olds write 12 lines in each verse and 42 year olds write four lines in each verse? Okay. Well, what, what, what makes that happen? Well, there's probably more to say, but there's less pushing against yourself. Like they won't like it. They're not going to get it. You've already said it. It's not you. It's not good. It's not doesn't match what you do when you're 24 you go and you just do it and i'm interested now in how can i be 42 and have all the music that i've written and also write with the same fire even if it's not the same topic it's not the same ideals but the way in which i create has that same combustion that same combustibility of being 24 i, I don't know why you should ever have to slow down yeah. So anyway, so are you still uh, like digesting new music as a listener, or or yeah. is it more you're in a space where you're kind of dialed into what your thing is for for creating? Or not listening? Listen. Like what's that? I said, or not listening to anything at all. Sometimes, sometimes I don't listen to anything. Okay. I've I I listen to Bill Evans all the time. I listen to Bill Evans as some other thing than music. I don't know what it is, but. I listen to Bill Evans like you'd listen to nature. Wow. I listen to Bill Evans all the time. And and what's that? I, I was just going to ask, what about Bill Evans speaks to you? What about his playing? 
I think it's probably the closest to God. Well, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it's the closest. For me, it's the closest to whatever the core of creation is to me. I don't know why. It, wow. it, it, to me, his playing sounds like past lives. Yes. It, it sounds like past lives. It sounds like he's just about to touch the edge of the universe with what he's doing. Wow. And or it yeah. sounds like a memory that I don't have, but I can see. Yes. That's great music. That's beautiful. Great music makes you say to yourself, Did I did I love a woman in 1962? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can jump that rail with the music you make and make people one wow, was it this sounds like New York City, 1952, and I wasn't there, but I just feel like it's someone else's memory that I'm dialed into. And he does that to me, you know? And, he all, and I also like it because I don't know what he's doing. Right. And so because I can't break it down, I'm forced to just receive it. If you listen to something you don't know how it's made, you are forced to only receive it. If I'm listening to things I know how to make, it's hugely constructive and instructive and I learned so much but if I really just want to feel the soul of music without knowing what's in it mm -hmm. I listen to music like that where I just get transported and I can't tell you what the variables are I don't know what I don't know what's going on <laughs> I only know how I feel you know and um, and then I listen to pop music I, I'll always love pop music I'm up on it um, and I'll listen to it I like it. I like good pop music. Yeah, Great. one of our one of our listeners actually asked a question, um, wondering what your favorite current artists are, people you check out who are out. Uh, I might not have like favorite artists, but I have like favorite work that's been done. Like, I don't, I don't. Although it, I, there are people whose work I really like, but like for instance, like the Dua Lipa record is great. Like as a pop record. Yeah. It's a great, the low end and the rhythm section, sort of like a perfect pop record where the hooks are rhythmic hooks. They're not soaring melodic hooks. They're pu pulse-based hooks. It's purely rhythmic. And the, the, the rhythm section is insane. Like that's almost a perfect pop record. I mean, it might be a perfect pop record. Um, I love Alec Benjamin because I think he's writing from that, like I was saying, like that youthful place where he's just going, he's going, he has to, you know, it's that need to express when you just kind of come online as a human being. Um, I like the way Phoebe Bridgers writes. I think that's really consummate stuff. Um, and then look, I mean, I like everybody's wins. When someone gets a win, I just love it. I don't, I don't know where I got this from. I just, I, I just, I don't care if it was my mortal enemy. If I was on the treadmill and the song was good, I'd be like, that's good. That's a win. You know, I like, I know how hard writing songs is that when anybody gets a win, I'm very excited. Like I'm very excited for them. You know, and I'm excited for me, oddly enough, is like this interconnected world of writers where if someone gets a three pointer, yeah. it just makes me so happy. <laughs> Because it just means that I might, you know, I mean, if I was if I was being as selfish as I could about it, right. it just reminds you that they're out there. It reminds you that great songs are out there, you know. And it's so inspiring too, man. Yeah, I, great song would just inspire me, uh, you know. Because otherwise, if I'm not listening to great music, I don't know what I would do. You know, <laughs> it's the music that brings me to these moments where I'm like, oh my god, like I'm, I'm so inspired now. I want to do something and be something. And even if I'm not even sure what that is, it's the the beauty of the discovery of the action to take action. Yes. It's just the beauty of the discovery.
very similar to of is that sense of 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 renewed wonder in sex. It's the only other thing. If they and they are very similar in the sense that they take place in a very expansive, vast part of the brain that I'm not sure neurologists have figured out the exactly the GPS location of it. But our love of music is massive, like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. It's bigger than Earth, you know. Yeah. And, and do you ever think to yourself, like, well, I'm going to die without playing all the music that I could have played. Like, yeah. I, I will leave more on the table no matter when I die. Yeah. And, that, you know, and it's funny because I, I saw that you had played with McCoy Tyner. Yeah. And um, I saw him at the Jazz Foundation concert in New York like four years ago. And maybe just under four years ago. And... I watched from the side of the stage and I was so moved by it that this thought happened to me. And I said, some people should be immortal. Yes. Some human beings should apply for immortality and be granted immortality because you're born, you develop a sense of yourself, you develop a voice. You are the only person who can access what you access. You are the only person who can give the world that particular thing and it is a it is a resource that is finite and i my brain can't understand that that when mccoy tyner passed away there's there's the only person who could access that part of the universe was him and so he you can never get that anymore you know those are greats when you go wow you can't there's no more james brown music yeah when james brown died i remember going there's you're never going to get james brown music again no one's going to do it. You know, he was the sole author of that Prince. No one's going to do that, you know? And, and I always think to myself, wow, if, if there were like an office of immortality you could apply to, you go, my name is Prince Rogers Nelson. And I want to submit my work for you. And they would go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. You're, 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 you're through for the next thousand years or something, you know? But isn't and, that and, yeah. kind of the point though? Like, don't you look forward to, being free from the the physical element of expression and rejoin. I mean, theoretically, rejoin. You mean like you mean like go back to the other side? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like once you get there, then what's left? What else is left? Just to continue oh. expressing the same thing, or oh, you mean you mean uh, uh, this is really fascinating. But I want to make sure I know what you're saying. Uh -huh. You're uh, uh, say it again a little more explicitly. Okay. So when I think of McCoy, I feel like um, he reached a level of pure expression. Okay. And I, I feel like when you reach that level of pure expression, you either just keep expressing that purity and then you wonder what's next. And the only thing that's next is, is to join purity itself. Oh, uh-huh. Wow. Know? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's just a continual cycle. Even if it's right. immortality, the immortality in this conscious self. Right. Wow. Would, you know, equate. You're, yeah. You're you know, saying the side of your face is mashed up against the ceiling. Uh huh. You've gone. You've gone as far as you can go, and the oh, that's very deep, man. That is, that is beautiful. It's actually beautiful. I think about Bill Evans that way. I mean, yeah. Bill Evans. It never, I mean, I hope this isn't taken the wrong way. There isn't necessarily, I mean, you could chart certain parts of his electric trio, mm -hmm. or I mean, I mean, his quartet. But for the most part, Bill Evans appears astounding musician. Yeah. Not necessarily a journey of evolution, just appears with pure perfection and continues to play with pure perfection even through his decline so through his physical decline you can go back to the late 70s and hear some of the best bill evans music it doesn't necessarily it's, it's not like miles davis in the sense where he keeps peeling layers away peeling layers away but that to me is also like i'm just as intrigued by that like i understand evolution how does someone just appear whole cloth it's like they're put here, man. It's like yeah. they, 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 it's like a stocked pond. Someone, 
hmm, someone drops that in, you know, someone goes, Boop. I mean, I'm, Boop. Bill Evans has entered the game. Boop. Just, I mean, I would have, I would love to have heard how he played the piano three years in. Probably sounded like he did. Probably always sounded like, did you always sound like you sound now to a certain extent when you picked up the drumstick? No, not at all. And just, you know, even talking more about what you were just talking about, um, what if you, what if immortality is the fact that you get a chance to start over, but you have to end one cycle to begin another one? And so I have said before, it, you, you can get in a certain mood uh-huh. where I think writing, I think playing music does this. You can, you can, this is getting really deep now, which I like, but you could say, I can't wait to die and I can't wait to come back. Yeah. You could say, I can't wait to die, come back, die, come back, die, come back, die, come back. And, uh, Sometimes when I'm playing or when I'm writing, I get that excited. Yeah. Not in those words, but you can yeah. sometimes through music get that excited where you just sort of give into all of it. You know, you go, do do with me what you will. I, I, I say, you look at the universe, you go, pay me what I'm worth. So I'm <laughs> me what worth. Yeah. Pay me what you think I'm worth. Tell me, tell me where you want to go. Um, but yeah, there is immortality. And there's certainly metaphoric immortality in being a musician. And um, I don't think, I mean, if you did, if you did, a very quick thumbnail study of the music you listen to, what percentage of people have passed away in all of your sort of the last five years of your musical listening? Oh man, at least 80%. 80%, but you don't think about it that way. Yeah. Hmm. You don't think they're all current. They're, you right. visit them, you visit them like they're here. It's you like, know? There's, there's nothing new and there's nothing old. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the older, the, the older we get, the more excited I am for younger people because that's, there's that much more music to spend their life catching up to. Oh, like, like anybody watching this, it's like Bob Dylan awaits you. Yes. Neil Young after the gold rush and harvest and harvest moon awaits you. Like it will get you. Bruce Springsteen tunnel of love will find you. And maybe not for, I don't know, if you're, if you're 25 and you're watching this, it might be another 10 years. Yeah. But the, 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 the amount of music that you have yet to discover that's literally around you right now. I mean, when I think that I was bumping up against Grateful Dead music when I was in high school, but hadn't checked it out for another, you know, I wouldn't have checked it out for another 20 years. Yeah. That gets me excited for what else is out there as I sit here. What else is sitting there that I won't discover for 10 more years from now? And that's where time and space gets real bendy, you know? Yeah. And John, that was actually a question that we had was asking about you playing with the dead and how you balance uh, the, the strong tradition of, of the sound that band has and the type of playing that those guys play. And then balancing that with your voice and what you wanted to bring to it as a musician. That's a very good question. Um, I think I have an understanding of where I'm lying to myself as a musician or a writer. For instance, I'll write a song and I'll go, I don't buy that. I'm not going to sing it. I don't think that's true. Like, I don't, I don't believe myself when I hear it back. I have the same thing as a guitar player. So I have these two sides of the scale. I have, I cannot play things that I find to be inauthentic. If I know they're inauthentic, I can't do it. And I want to sound not a little like Jerry Garcia. I want to sound exactly like Jerry Garcia. So you go for that, and in the back of your mind, you go, yeah, but don't. Do it through the filter of who you are. So, like, I think I think I had played long enough before I got into that band that I went, look, I know where my rails are. Like, I know what I do. And I'm looking to extend the boundaries of it, but not be inauthentic to myself. So there are things I do that are like, that touch on the Jerry Garcia intentionality, but I'm not trying to wear musical costume. Um, That's the filter. I'm the filter, but man, am I trying to put all of it through the filter? I mean, I'm trying to sound exactly like him, but in my own voice. So I do have, yeah. What's that? I mean, that's the only way you can really embody the yeah. actual sound and the experience of it. I mean, otherwise, yeah. it is not, it's not authentic. It's not true. Yeah, it's got, I just, I just, I just have to buy it. Yeah. 
that's all you have to do as a writer. Listen back and you go, do I buy it? And if I don't buy it, no one else is going to hear it. I'm never going to put it out. I did. I wrote a song the other day. I listened back to it. I don't buy it. What does it mean? Because I don't believe that I think that. Wow. I think I wrote it, but I don't think I believe it. And the same thing with playing guitar. I mean, I'm picking up certain amounts of scale, you know, scale-based stuff, Mixolydian stuff. There's certainly the sort of jaunty chromaticism, which I, I think is very important to that music. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's like it's yeah. I, but I'm 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 trying to still sound like me doing that. There are certain things I won't do. Like I won't go pure major scalar. Like I just I because it's I just that's not how I would voice a thing. So it's it's really um, a very uh, I'm very honored to have the task of doing of trying to do justice to the, the original founder of the music. And also doing justice to um, what I would say about it in an authentic way. Jaunty chromaticism. Someone pointed that out that I did use. Uh, you heard it here first. Jaunty chromaticism. <laughs> Great. Great. Right, okay. So if uh, you're just saying you'll scrap a song if you don't feel that it's authentic. So when you're putting together an album or a group of songs for an album, how many songs would you say don't make the cut for one album? Like, how much extra do you write? Dozens. But I don't finish those. So if I finished everything, it would take me a lot longer to make a record. And I would have 30 to 40 extra songs. Mm -hmm. But I don't finish them because I know at some point in writing them, I don't, I don't want this. Not that it's not good. So when you have a certain amount of dexterity or talent to what you do anything you do sounds passable yeah. anything i've written in the last five years when you first heard the beginning of it you go oh this is good but it might not be and i think there's an extra burden for artists who have a sound that's so instantly recognizable that it can confuse the listener into thinking it's automatically great because it sounds so much like that artist you have to go that much harder into being critical of yourself because yeah, it's really convincing, but it's not actually great. So the better you are, the greater you have to be so that you make sure you're not just resting on the fact that it sounds reminiscent of something great, but it's not. So if I know that's where I am in the making of a song, I don't care if I'm 20 minutes into writing it or I've been a week into writing a song and I go, nope, I don't want it. And I pitch it and no one around me goes, Oh, come on. Because the people around me have heard what I have written and they go, yeah, I get it. No, you don't want it because anything I write, I'm going to be on stage singing. And I always look at myself on stage playing the song I'm in the middle of writing. And if I don't want to be on that stage in my mind playing it, then I don't finish it. And so I would say there's probably five to one wow. songs that I write that I throw away to ones that go, now that's for the pile. But then that pile, they never, they never come off the pile. So I actually write all the way up to the number that needs to go on a record. But I don't go, oh my God, I have 40 finished songs. How do I get, to that? How do I get here? And, and what about when you're in that process or if you're in the studio, you know, collaborating with producers and musicians, how much, how much are you open to feedback about what you've got? Well, then if I'm working with someone else, they drive. Even if I think there's nothing down the road, my job is to help them go there. My job is not to say there's nothing down this road because there might be, because I'm not them. So when I'm in a co-writing or producing or co-producing mode, I'm ready to drive. I'm ready to drive behind them wherever they want to go. I'll drive. If it's me, I just know myself so well. I've done this for so long. I genetically know what's going to sort of pan out and what's not. But it's not for me if I'm working with someone else to say, believe me, this is no good. Because I don't know what's in their head. I know what's in my head, and I can tell you very quickly, I'll either have the ability to write three verses and a bridge around that, or I'll have the ability to, to sing this or express this in a uh, believable way or not. But if it's someone else, you just have to constantly encourage. That's the only way through it. But I like those two different ways of doing it. Even if you don't like it, though. 
it's not my job to like it immediately. It's my okay. job to help someone the best I can through okay. what they want to say. But most of the yeah. time, everyone kind of likes the same things. We all react to the same things. Yeah. Words that line up with the rhythm of the words, that line up with the melody of the words, that line up with the sensibility of the words, that line up with all the same things in the music, you know. I don't know many people who disagree about a great song being great. So I think those physics are always there. But someone might write a song where the actual music they're writing isn't right, but they, through that, have constructed all the right words to throw on another song. So it is a totally different story when, when you're co-piloting because I don't have the map. You know, and that's fun. That's really fun. I go, go for it, go. And as soon as someone goes, yeah, I don't think so, I go, great. Or maybe I don't, I've never really fought anybody. Oh no, come on. This is good. And you don't know it. I think we all know what's good. You know, we're just trying to find it. Maybe some people don't go. Sometimes I entertain that thought that they just don't, you know, like some people just don't know how to love. They just never have ever experienced it so they just don't, they don't know how to give it they don't know how to support it but do, are you uh, saying they're making great music and they don't believe in it or they can't quite access the, the how to make music that is going to touch other people as much as they might be able to well yeah um I, I listen to a lot of artists you know that i know and i, I feel like they're really trying to push for something but they, they're losing that secret connection we were, we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. um what is the purpose uh what is my purpose who am i like just right. a deeper question so that that is something that vibrates from their their soul it vibrates from and that comes and goes that comes that and goes, goes. By the way, you can write you can have it with the song you finish on a friday and right. lose it that next monday yeah that is not a constant uplink and do you, you sit know? out at that point i said that's i said that's not a constant uplink but do you I, also, oh, you need, I was wondering if you allow that process to play out. All like the time. You, you were inspired Friday, but you're not inspired Monday. Do you try to go back and force it on Monday or you just. You, you know, it's, this is it. Like what we're talking about right now, this yeah. is it. Like we are, we are on the target of what makes this all a challenge and a blessing yeah. and a joy. You are not always inspired. Yeah, that's it. You are waiting for inspiration so that you know how to work in the trance. Mm. We don't know how this works. I don't know how it works. I'm an idiot as to how it works. I'm just good at when I feel it and the trance is there. I can open up my toolkit and start going and start going before it closes. When I was younger, I didn't quite know how to work in there. It's like a lucid dream. I don't know how to dream about a certain thing. But I know when I get in the dream, I'm like, I am in the dream. Here we go. Yeah. And so what you have to do is understand that that's not an affront to your talent, that it's half magic, and you wait for the magic. I don't know why some days it just makes sense. Yeah. Most days it makes no sense to me how you could write a song. I don't understand <laughs> today how I could do it. Right. I have no idea. And the right. days where you have super strength, you go, it's easy, John. You just start writing and that's it. And then you do. And it is. And so I've now learned, and this is, this is hopefully advice worth taking. The way you prove who you are as a writer is how you survive in between the kills. Mm. Can you live in between meals? Yeah. Mm. Can you drive home from the studio or can you put the guitar away in the case? Right. and go, we got nothing, and still survive, and just wait. And the next day, don't get discouraged. Hit it with the same amount of energy. Go looking. Go look. I call it going fishing now. I'm just going fishing. Just going fishing. Try this. Try that. Try that. And some days, and there's always this moment at the end of writing a great song. I go, tomorrow, I know nothing again. And being a songwriter is understanding the trip from knowing nothing to going, oh, that's a thing. Oh, that you're, you're, you're learning each song as you go. And that is a trip that is difficult to take repeatedly, unless you're willing to accept that that is the art form. 
is going from being completely uninformed about this idea you just stepped on to going, tell me more, tell me more. Well, I don't know that much more. Uh, to, to all the way, you've got one line left in the verse. Second verse needs one line left. That's the most fun puzzle in the world. You walk around all day figuring out what the one last line is. Then you're done. You listen back to it 12 times in a row. You put it in the done pile to be recorded. And what do you do tomorrow? Nothing. You go back in the boat, you throw the line, and you just wait. And you don't know how to catch fit. You just wait. And most of the time, it's a boot or it's seaweed. <laughs> and you just keep going. And if you can live like that in between those moments where you're walking on air, then you can survive it. If you have it linked up to your uh, your sense of personal worth, it's going to be a very long winter in between, <laughs> in between the songs. But, if, yeah. if, you know, it's like professional blackjack players. Here we go again. Uh -huh. Like, they're really good at, like, very measured winning and losing. Like, they go, didn't have a winning night at the casino, but uh, I'm not going to go deeper into my pockets. To, just, the cards weren't there. Yeah. And I just come home sometimes and I go, cards weren't there. Yeah. And then one day you wake up and you just like, I get it. I get it. Verse goes into this, goes into this bridge. And choom, 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 choom. It's easy. You just find words that rhyme, John. What's so, what's so hard about that? And the next day you can't do it. So you work while you're in the trance. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, I was going to ask, I had a few questions teed up about lyric writing, and it's just interesting to hear how you express ideas when you're talking, because you, it's, it seems like you think a lot with analogies, and, and that's how, when you speak, that's just how you express your point, so that seems like something that, I mean, that is kind of the gist of a lot of lyric writing, right? Yeah, I am, I am hard to understand sometimes. Sometimes I miss the key nouns that let other people understand what it is I'm talking about. I sort of already begin speaking as if it were the 12th page of the <laughs> book about the thing I want to tell someone about. But that's actually good for songwriting because I think a little abstract, I just live an abstract life in a certain extent, to, you know, to a certain extent. And I think metaphors are very important in songwriting. Um, you can't do too much of any of it, but to have a very, to, have, to basically you're making like a meal. Yeah. To have enough of everything on the plate so that it all is the right experience. I mean, that's, to me, I'm just, I'm looking for the song idea that spawns one chorus, three verses and a bridge. That's hard. Well, what's the one idea that you are able to write that you believe in the word or the words as the title? You buy it in yourself that that's how you feel. And that you go, oh, I know how I can write three verses about this. Those are rare, man. They're really rare. Um, but when I find one, I go, no one's going home till I finish this. You know. But that's what makes you such a wonderful orchestrator in the sense of that, one, you allow yourself to take all these pure aspects of yourself and, like, throw them on a canvas. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the canvas of all the purity of work, and then you begin to format it and place it in a ah. place where it feels yeah that's the more i think i'm doing that in real time yeah and that's i think that's, i'm mm -hmm. i'm running both those down the tube at the same time right. okay. so i'm a lot of times i'll hear what i have to say for the first time as i sing it and that's a weird one man because i don't even know what i'm singing and i'll hear myself sing it that has to be the truth yeah. like it's got to be the truth if you're staring at the wall singing gibberish and your gibberish becomes English and the English becomes how you feel. But you weren't even thinking about why did I just say that? Well, that better, that's probably the exact subconscious truth that you should investigate. You know, it is, you know, yeah. uh, I don't know how it's done. I just, I keep doing it till it happens. Right. And I, I still feel like it's all an accident. You know, Never wrong with an accident. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it just feels still feels accidental that they have, you know, it's like landing the space shuttle seems seems like sort of accidentally successful when there's so much against it. It, it, it lands against all the odds. And I feel like finishing a song is so against the odds. It's I mean, anybody watching who's a songwriter. I feel the exact same way you do. You are against all the odds. I, I have no idea how we finish a song. I have no idea how I do it. I just do it, you know. And uh, 
One last question about kind of the craft of, of writing. Uh, you kind of talked about when you're helping someone else, you know, find a vision for a song if you're playing a producer role. But what about when you're working with the, the great producers that you've worked with? I know obviously Steve Jordan and Don yeah. Ross and No ID. Um, how, how does that collaboration vary and how does that feel for you as a, how to do that? I mean, for me, it's still just finding an ace pitcher, right? Because I'm the guy, I'm still the artist who writes it. So it's a collaboration in the sense that I'm taking all of what they have in, but it's still me writing for me, but using what they have to offer. So it's not necessarily, it's not a duo kind of a thing, but it's using someone else's energy to support new ideas to come through. So New Light with No ID would never have come out if I weren't with No ID. So in that sense, it's incredibly important to the song. I mean, there's no song without it, but it's still just setting me up to, to write a certain thing, say a certain thing. And I think that's the imprint. Same thing with Steve Jordan. I mean, Steve's playing yeah. and his soul sensibilities, I mean, made me want to really focus in on those songs on continuum being kind of soul songs you know and then to have don around knowing all the records he's made i want some of that you know southern northern california sunny coastal 1972 vibes you know and that's the thing as musicians we get to time travel you know we get to everything i've written is a little love letter to a thing or a place or a time and I do kind of make records. I go, oh, I want to visit this era, you know? And right now I'm very into like, I'm very into like 70s FM radio era, you know, AKA Yacht Rock. Right, yes. You know, I, and there's no one who doesn't love Yacht Rock. Man, yeah. <laughs> brings everyone together, brings yeah. everyone together. <laughs> it does. On and on, right. she just right. keeps on crying. <laughs> you know that song? Oh, yes, sir. Even Bishop, On and On. Oh, Forget about what you think it sounds like or what it might be. Little... You put it on and people go like this. Down in Jamaica, they got tons of pretty women. Steal your money and they'll break your heart. Is it cool? It's probably never been cool. But is it great? Yes. And is <laughs> great cool? Yes. Therefore, it is cool. It is. You know? No. Yeah. Steel guitar and bongos and ace session players and this voice that's like a sine wave. On and on! <laughs> great. It's great. So I'm into this thing right now where it's like, I just like things to be great, like super pleasant musical cashmere. I just want, I, especially now in these days, it's like I was working on a record and I kind of feel like it's from a different time now and I started all over again and everything just has to be like, oh, that is lovely. You know, that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah, man. So, uh, John, do you, do you want to mention the chair you have? Because uh, we have, through this app, we have a donate, a donate button. Yeah. I want to talk about. I've had this charity for the last 10 years called Heart and Armor. It's a foundation that researches and treats uh, returning combat veterans for things like PTSD and reintegration and nutrition and health and wellness. And um, so you can click, I guess, on some kind of link and donate to that. Uh, it's incredible work that these fine men and women are doing. It's incredible. We've never had like a gala. Everything we've done has been in, it just really tied into research and getting grants. Department of Defense have given grants. Like we've really submitted incredible research and gotten funding. And the the challenge goes on and on and on to keep it going and um, keep understanding what the needs are. Is, you know, we're sort of developing treatments that are picked up now by, by the VA, which is really exciting. And so if you want to keep that going, click on the donate there. And um, yeah, awesome. thank you. Thank you for putting it up. Of course. Um, Eric, I have a question for you. 
Uh -oh. What have you done these last? How, how have you? How have you found yourself these last few months not being able to play? Like, do you have a drum kit in your house? Yes. So you must be playing. So, how have you found ways to identify that you are you when music, when playing music, is how we identify who we are? Yeah. How have you managed to identify with yourself without being able to play gigs for the last few months? Wow, you know, I'm kind of strange in that way where it was never ever about the gig for me per se with attendance, with people being there and supporting. Mm -hmm. Playing for me has always been this personal surrender and like celebration of life within myself because uh, it's the only time I've always felt that I'm not really judging myself in the same way of like mm -hmm. trying to script myself to be a certain way in front of people to, uh, I don't know, to win a smile or to manipulate an emotion. It's, it's really just raw energy. So it's, it's, for me, it's tremendously easy to just come down here and play. Unless, uh, you know, I'm just unmotivated that day. Like some right. days, you say you're just unmotivated. Right. But uh, most days I come down here and I just, man, it's, it's peaceful. Right. Peaceful. It's peaceful. And um, the gig thing, it, it, it's just a gig, but music is forever. Uh, if I if I never played another, another gig, the, the soul of music always makes me feel great inside. And to me... And that's why you'll keep playing gigs forever. For the <laughs> no, but I know it. I, I, I've gone to songwriting for that. Uh -huh. Just to... Just, I've never been less famous since I became famous, and I love it. Like, this is the first thing I've done in uh, maybe a couple months uh -huh. that has reminded me that I exist in the greater world. I yeah. don't, I've, I've really enjoyed, like, you need a public to be famous. There is no public at the moment. Yeah. Therefore, nobody is famous. I mean, you could say that's yeah. one way of looking at it. But yeah. I don't have a public. So I am not, I'm on hold. All that's sort of drained out of me. And I thought to myself the other day, as sort of, as sort of the reason to, to write music right now, I thought, when else in the world are you going to have the chance to live outside of the zone of influence from all these things and culture all the time? Yeah. Like, I have no exposure to cultural influence musically right now, because it's not really up and running, that kind of high speed culture. So I have, for the first time in 20 years, I don't have anything in my head telling me who I have to be or what I have to sound like or where I want to be placed. Yeah. And the things that I'm writing, I'm like, oh, that's how you want to make music. Because yeah. it doesn't begin with like, well, I want to be liked by this person. I want to be able to be on this show. I want the world to think this about me. I want these people to put me in their Instagram stories. For the first time since I had a record deal, I'm writing things out of the complete silence of just wanting to write. Yeah. And I'm like, when am I ever going to be this shielded from yeah. that, the radiation of, of influence all the time that's coming in? And sometimes it's great, but wow, it's been really interesting to write without this idea of like, and then you're going to see me this way. And then you're going to, I'm writing like a dude who might someday send his demo cassette to a record label <laughs> and whatever those things are like they have to be honest because i'm not doing them for any other reason but to go what's in here without comparing it to what's going on out there because there's not much going on out there so it's like when when you go on vacation you sit alone you know you start hearing what you think about things right i'm hearing what i think about things and then i'm writing just that and everything is very exciting that way yeah man i'm so curious you're mine. Woo. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, man. Life is an interesting thing, and you know that's why I appreciate you, man. Because of of a lot of people, um, it's rare to be around someone that not only just has a way with words, but doesn't utilize them in a way that's superficial. Uh, Thank you. Every trying. Oh man, no, it's amazing. It, it it connects with so much depth. Every sentence, every phrase, Thank and um, it's it's beautiful. It's magical to be around that energy. It's magical. To be Thank around you. Like that. Well, yeah. you've written some very sweet emails <laughs> in our in our in our time of knowing each other. You are you are very dialed in, maybe oh. in ways that are pure 
Yeah. I'm a little, I'm a, I, I uh, am not a pure spirit. I've, I'm littered with little desires and little things. And, no. and I always admire the pure approach. And I, and I, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little corrupt. I'm a little corrupt. My musical heart is pure. Sometimes creatively I go, what's going on over there? And who's over there? And they say, what? And they'd like to hear what? I'll be right back. Boom. Two years gone, made a record. <laughs> You know, uh, but that's true to who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I see other people like I, I, I said to Sean Mendez one time, I'm like, you're just me without all the yuck. You're just like, you're just like, you're just like boom, boom. you know, it's like I see I see people now and they're just like, they're just like better, ver better, cleaner versions of the thing. But whatever it is that makes me go on and on, whatever it makes me, whatever it is that makes me talk and you throw your questions out the window, you go, I'm never going to get to these. <laughs> uh, you know i trust it i trust that there's something to it and it's yeah. served me well as i've gotten older it's served me very well yeah, yeah. but to, to, but together yeah. man could we make some music yes sir yeah please your purity and my superficiality we can oh, take man. the world on <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm gonna hold you to that yeah man anytime anytime hey. But John, man, thank you. You know, thank you, Eric. So thank valuable. You, uh, everything that you poured into today, everything you poured in throughout your legacy. I mean, just as you as a person, that's what I'm saying. Thank you for coming on for here. It's my pleasure. And my pleasure. thank you all for listening. I mean, any last words you want to share with, with your people before we sign off? Just uh, hang in there, breathe, and uh, yeah, just hang in. Just, just hang in. Hang in. I love you all and, and uh, for all 4,086 of you. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you when my hair is down to here. <laughs> we were just talking about it before. We were saying the length of our hair growth is the chronological graph. It's the graphical chronological equation. Yeah. <laughs>